The method that I use for knitting horizontal cables is related directly to the way that I knit popcorns and a lot of other bridge techniques. Um, you can review the lesson on popcorns and there's also a couple of other bridging lessons that might get you started before you jump into this cable. I'm going to have a four stitch bridge and then I'm going to be knitting a series of strips over groups of four needles. So it'll go like this all the way across the fabric. One row across the edge bridge and the edges are the only place that I have bridges. And then I'm going to knit 14 rows on these four needles. So that's the second row. Fourteenth row ends on the right, so the fifteenth row will knit across this group of four and into the next group of four. There are no bridges anywhere except at the very edges. So the first group is done. I'll hold those and then knit fourteen rows here. So that's one, Once again, the 15th row knits the last row of this strip and the first row on the next. You do have to watch your waiting or you're going to have some stitches jumping off their needles. the bridge at the left. Now I'm going to start crossing groups of four. Beginning over on the right, I'm going to cross all of them the same way. And here's what you need to look for. I'm going to move the four from the right over to the left. And then there is a float right here. These floats are created by the way the last row of one strip works into the first of the next and they're unavoidable. And you need to deal with them by passing the tool with the second set of stitches under the float and then hang those stitches onto the right hand needles. And there's one more little step that you need to worry about here. That float will always get caught up on the needles and you just need to lift the float off of the needles Make sure none of the stitches have unknitted. And then the next two groups of four will cross exactly the same way. Every yarn is a little bit different. The first time I did this, I tried it with just 12 rows on each strip and it was too tight to manage comfortably. It knitted, but it wasn't pretty and it wasn't fun to knit. So I think 14 rows is better here. Again, get rid of the float that got lifted. Make sure none of the stitches have loosened. They try to, always. And then I'll cross the next two sets of four. Again, pass the second tool under the float. And if you don't see it, you're just not looking hard enough. It's always there. You can't eliminate it. And if you don't pass these stitches under the float, the float shows on the knit side, and you don't want that. Okay, I'd like to tell you that we're done, but we're not. Each of these groups will cross three times and it will all be based on the idea of splitting pairs that I described with the braided cables. So if these two, two groups of stitches cross and these two groups, the next time it's these two. So I'm going to split my groups starting from the left and as always with split pairs, I will alternate the direction of my crosses. So instead of going right left for the crossing, I will cross 
the left group first over towards the right pass the right tool I just unknitted one I'll catch that after pass the right tool underneath the float and hang the stitches from the right side now if ever there was a case of something that has to be done slowly this is it would I do these cables all over a whole sweater? Absolutely not. It's more of an accent than anything else. And one border of this packs a lot of punch. You don't need much more. So once again, remove the two sets of four stitches. The set from the left travels over to the right first. And then the right stitches pass under that float to hang on the empty needles. Lift the float off of the needles where it always, always, always catches. And one more crossing in this sequence. So this time again, the stitches from the left cross to the right needles. And the right stitches go under the float. Once again, it would be lovely if we were done. We're not. We have to cross once more, and it'll be the same as the first crossing. So I'll begin on the right. You see the stitches getting a little bit tighter every time we do this. Stitches from the right come over here to the left. The tool passes under that progressively smaller float. And the needles are replaced on the left side. Now, I'm doing this with groups of four, but clearly you could do it with threes as well. And I think you would probably find them easier to manage. Initially, anyhow. I wouldn't jump right in and do a four or a five stitch braided cable. Okay, and then there you go. And once again, lifting the float off. Check all the stitches. And one more crossing and we're end is in sight. Okay, time to clean up things, make sure everything's caught the way it should be. And again, right here, I see a couple of stitches that have unknitted. And right here, just those two. And the other sections are okay, except right here, I think there's two stitches that have unknitted. All right, now there was only a single row on each bridge and yet in the center there are more. And in order to keep the fabric from drooping open where the cables are, what I usually will do is pick up an edge, the pearl bump actually, of the stitches sporadically across the work, maybe every five or six needles depending on how loose you think it is. So here's another one here. 
This will help to close things up and pop the cable right to the front of the fabric. Then I'm going to bring all the needles out to holding position. And this is going to be tight. None of the uh, needles are crossing each other, which is a, a very good thing. And that's because of all the extra rows we knitted on each of those sections. I'm gonna to try to knit across with the carriage. If it box and it doesn't wanna do it, then I very often will just hand knit a row like that. There you go. 